We tidy up loose ends right now, folks, on this week's edition of shows on what is the hottest form, best form of Alabama football news, notes, and information you are going to find in the streets. This right here is, in my own words, the podcast with yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. And guess what? You are locked and loaded onto the Ask Stephen segment. We got a lot of great questions here from you, the Crimson Tide fan. And we'll get to the first couple right now. And the first of the couple comes from uh, my man, Greg Dwight, who goes by Bama Greg. And uh, Greg's got a question here on Tua. What you got for us, Greg? Steven Smith. This is Greg Dwight. Bama Greg, as I'm known on Jocks Radio. I got a good question for you. Do you consider Tua... Fragile. I hear it from a lot of Auburn fans and LSU fans, and they say that Tua won't make it in the NFL because he's so fragile. If my calculations are correct, this Arkansas game will be the first game that he hasn't started since he uh, took over the starting job. Yes, he's played a little uh, banged up, and he's left a game for Jalen to come in and win it in the SEC championship game, but do you consider him fragile? And do you think the two ankle surgeries will uh, strengthen his ankles so he won't have this problem much more in his career? And will he be a high draft pick still with this injury? Well, Greg, when I look at Tua Tagovailoa, the junior quarterback for Alabama, I would not consider him as fragile. He's a guy that has that warrior mentality. He's tough, likes to play through pain. Now, honestly, I would like to see him protect his body a little bit more, slide, not take a lot of those hits, uh, throw the ball away, play the next play, protect your investment, protect your arm where you being a quarterback, your biggest, your most important investment is your arm. That's what the NFL scouts are drafting you for or looking to draft you for, that being your arm. Now, they look for you to make smart decisions mentally, you know, making the right calls, making the the right reads, making the right checks, but you being a quarterback, you get paid to sling that ball across the field. So your most valuable asset or your most valuable commodity, if you will, is your arm. So I would love to see Tua do a much better job sliding, uh, protecting himself, playing the next play. But I wouldn't be uh, the type of person that would call him fragile. I just feel like he would have to do or he needs to do a much better job of protecting himself. That kind of just answers that question. He's tough. Uh, He likes to play through pain. In terms of the tightrope surgery, I think it does a incredible job in terms of Tua due to the fact that the tightrope, it holds the entire ankle in place. And uh, you look at it, think about players like Eddie Lacy that had numerous feet ankle injuries and if the tightrope was around for him how much better you no know, he could have been i remember nick saban talking about that cam robinson left tackle former left tackle of the crimson tide was the first one to have this surgery i believe he had it in 2014 to where had a high ankle sprain against tennessee and then two weeks later he was back against the LSU Tigers and played every snap of that game from his left tackle position. So Cam Robinson was able to get it. He, in turn, uh, in the National Football League, played at a high level, continues to play at a high level. So when I look at Tua, you know, here's a guy that had a tight rope surgery, doesn't appear to be in any more pain as to what I have heard this week. And I think the tightrope has revolutionized being able to get guys back healthy, back in full strength and in full go in terms of the lower extremities. And then your third part there to that question, Greg, I still think Tua is a top high, you know, first round pick. Just seeing how 19 teams in the NFL can use a quarterback, 19 of 32. So that is 59%. A little bit over half the league can still use a quarterback. And of those 19 franchises, six of those have the quarterback position as a primary, not secondary, 
primary need. They need a quarterback right now. So I look at Tua Tagovailoa, still a first round pick and a high draft pick at that. You've seen how you got these franchises tanking and trying to find their franchise player at that position. But really appreciate uh, Bama Greg, Greg Dwight for throwing it in there. Second question here comes from Miss Stephanie Robertson. Go ahead, Stephanie. Hi, Stephen. My name is Stephanie Robertson, and I, I wanted to say the 2019 was more committed. They was not. They went into a program that was not like the program today. Uh, they didn't have the high stats. They was coming off of a bad season. So my question is, I wanted to ask you, how committed do you think? The 2019 team is compared to the 2019 that's being honored this week, which I truly appreciate both teams. I just wish they had the commitment more than the 2019 did because they came into a program that was not exactly with all the high stats that we have now. We know the Alabama program now. So that's my question. How committed do you think that the 2019 team is compared to the 2019? Thank you. Well, Stephanie, that's actually a really, really good thought there. The 2009 class is a special one to me because, well, the 2009 team is a special one to me because that was a group that came to Alabama when Bama wasn't popping, when Bama was not the gold standard standard when Bama was not the powerhouse we know it as now in college football and most of those guys that came or quite a few of those guys were Mike Schumer recruits that were tired of losing were tired of being mediocre they were just ready for a change and while some of those guys jumped ship Upon Saban coming in, you have to appreciate the likes of Greg McElroy and uh, Mike McCoy, Javier Arenas, Eric Anders, uh, Brandon Dederick, the list goes on, Rolanda McClain. You know, those were just a few guys that were Mike Schumer recruits that were willing to bat or go to bat for Nick Saban, stay with that team, uh, provide some leadership. Chris Rogers, another one of those Mike Schumer guys that stayed the course and Lo and behold, were the main, uh, you know, leaders in getting Alabama to that 09, you know, national championship. And uh, those guys had a brotherhood. Those guys didn't take no bull job. They took no mess. They were down the business. They wanted to win. Uh, and they wanted to build something. They wanted to bring something special. It's part of that Nick Saban factor of giving the fans, giving you a supporter, a product that you could be proud of. That 09 team bought into giving this fan base, giving this university a program, a product that they could be very, very happy about and stand beside. And, and that 09 team was doubted. This was the same 09 team that you went into the year the standard was Florida. You know, Tim Tebow was the golden boy. Urban Meyer, you know, people were hailing him as the greatest to ever do it. People were talking dynasty in terms of Florida. So that 09 Bama team, a lot of people doubted it. Nick Saban was told prior to taking the job or upon taking the job, it would take him six years to win the first national championship. And he ended up getting the first one in half that time first one in three years when i look at this 2019 team i see a lot of toughness i see a lot of commitment i see a lot of dedication you know of course it's young and uh, when you're playing seven true freshmen keep in mind you know in years past alabama would play freshmen because uh, you couldn't keep the guy off the field but they would give that freshman a specific role and it would allow that player to grow Within that role, for the first time, uh, you're playing freshman off of necessity. You're playing freshman off of need due to you got some injuries here and there. And uh, despite that, you know these young guys growing, getting better week by week, improving game by game. And this matchup coming up against LSU will just be another situation where it can take another step forward. 
you know, people doubt this 2019 team saying this is not a championship team. This is not a championship bunch. This is not a group that's built to, you know, go all the way and bring home a national title, but they have bonded together. They have hung out with each other. This is a hungry group. This is a group that's not paying much attention to, you know, social media. Now, a lot of these guys are posting things on Twitter at a, you know, serious pace. They are focused on the game. They are focused on football. They're focused on winning and not just the players, the coaching staff too. Very veteran group that's, you know, uh, their mindset is pushing these guys to get the maximum effort out of all of them. So I see a lot of the 2009 tendencies in this 2019 group, Stephanie, and uh, I really feel like this group has a chance that continues to improve and grow like it's been doing. You will see this group more than likely in the college football playoff national championship game competing for a title. But definitely want to appreciate uh, Greg Dwight and Stephanie Robertson for those questions and uh, want to encourage you, the Crimson Tide football fan, if you got questions, if you got thoughts, if you got concerns about your team, the Alabama Crimson Tide, I encourage you to drop me a line, 205-259-6847, the number to call, 205-259-6847, and I will answer your questions live here on the show, but the winner today is Greg Dwight. Bama Greg, you my man. You have won the first edition of the Ask Steven segment. So you will get the gift card or the um the, the uh yeah the gift card courtesy of Milo's hamburgers in Tuscaloosa. So my man Bama Greg Greg Dwight you will get that free shake from Milo's and you'll get a chance to meet yours truly live at Bryant Denny Stadium this weekend as the Crimson Tide takes on LSU. But greatly appreciate Greg Dwight and Stephanie Robertson for sending in those questions. That's gonna do it. For this week's edition of shows on what is the hottest form of Alabama football news, notes, and information, as always, you download the Touchdown Alabama Magazine app for your iPhone if you're rocking Team Apple, Google Play Store if you got your Android phone, podcast options, bottom of the screen, check those out. Also, subscribe to TD. AlabamaMag.com and Touchdown Alabama Magazine on YouTube, the site with over 6,000 subscribers strong thanks to you, the fans. When we come back to start next week's edition of shows, I will dive into why do people tend to overhype these big-time matchups in terms of the opponent Alabama plays. Until next time, folks, this is your man, Stephen M. Smith. This is Ben, in my own words. What's up, college football fans? You can catch the hottest show in the streets. That being In My Own Words, the podcast, every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Subscribe to Touchdown Alabama magazine for the best in Tide football.